Great moments are born in great opportunity. All comes down to today. You take this helmet and you put it right in his numbers, okay? I want to see nothing but snot bubbles in his nose. A lot of people want to blame coaches for a lot of things. Nobody puts coaches <laughs> trade up. And we shut them down because we can't. It's because I believed in you. And I wish I could say something that was classy and inspirational. But it just wouldn't be our style. Let's do it. That's right, folks. It's time for another rendition of Coach's Corner. We reach into the bag of questions and we pull one out from one of our old favorites, Zach Marincic. Ooh. Who hey, asks? Zach? Hey, who? Who asked the question? Ooh, uh, thoughts on the uh, interior uh, defensive lineman or against the Raiders. Uh, what was different uh, this week? <laughs> all right. Uh, yes, as we all watched uh, this last game, Everybody was frightened and downright terrified of what was going to happen in the run game. Um, and uh, boy, howdy, did uh, <laughs> we did something different between these past previous games. Uh, those linemen came out. I don't They were just a wall. I think either swallowed them up or ate them whole. I don't know what happened. Coach, break it down for us. What happened? He- yeah, it's it. it I, as I watched through the game, I didn't see like a d- very direct, complete change in identity of our defense. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, what I believe is our defensive linemen just played a lot better. We were just wow. better than their offensive line um, in a lot of aspects. So I'm going to walk us through a couple of plays here. Look at some of the uh, techniques, responsibilities, things that we did really well. Um, the the one time that I definitely saw a hey, we're not going to get pushed around and run on a lot was the very first play. Okay. Um, so generally we have we have a th- we run a three four. So we have three defensive linemen and four linebackers. Um, this first play looked very much like our old school four three. Um, so we we kind of wanted to come out early and establish hey. We, we know what you guys want to do and we're going to take it away early. So what that, what w- the reason I say that is you look at the box. I've talked about this a couple of weeks now. The box is basically anything right here. It's two or three yards. It's fi- it's like five yards back to five yards back inside of the tackle. So everything in here is the box. So to see if you want to run or if we're giving them a little bit of cushion to say, Hey, I dare you to run is you count the numbers in the box. And right now we do we have the numbers to match up with what they're doing. They don't have to beat us pretty good to be have a successful run play. And the biggest difference that I know that this is more of a four man front is this one technique or this supposed to be a zero technique in Limbaugh Joseph. If we're running a three man front, he's head up on the center, and he is just trying to push this guy back, and he's a two gap player. Because we have so many guys in the box, he doesn't have to be a two gap player. He gets to be in this a gap. The gaps go from inside out, A, B, C. So between the center and the guard is A. Between the guard and the tackle is B. Outside the tackle is a C gap. Um, So now he gets to be a a true one gap, backside A gap player. So he's he's in the one technique, meaning he's shaded this side up here to the center, and he's playing A gap. Now we have every gap filled up because we have seven guys in the box. Hmm. Um, this was us being like, hey, we know you want to run the ball. I know we've had some poor games against the run, um, but we're not going to allow that to happen. So as I run this through, but I'm also going to show you the technique. It's not just just numbers in the box. It's also the technique that's used to successfully defend and beat up this um, this play. Um, so Derwin James, again, another point. Derwin James is right here. He's down here in the box. Oh, hello. He's not up here at 12 yards. They walked yeah. him down here. They have Alohi. And Nas is back here. So they have three safeties in in the game right here. And they allowed Derwin to be that extra guy kind of sniffing the box, looking to see if something comes. Um, So I'll go ahead and run the play for you guys. You can kind of see, obviously, we know, we all know it was an extremely successful play and we shut him down pretty good. So he gets up there. The line stays stout. Derwin gets in on the ball. It's again a Again, it too. We had numbers in the box. You're not going to get a huge run um, when they have numbers. Now, you do give up, obviously, in the past. Derek wasn't um bold enough to check to a pass on first and 10 that was clearly their game plan was to come try to run mm-hmm. um so we had a pretty good we we had a good game plan here in the first play um also there's no way that that um this this next play that we watch you're just going to see a dominance in the offense uh, on the defensive line I'll, let me bring it up now uh okay again so we have derwin james somewhat in the box so this is derwin here he has him walked down and you still have your two safeties up high you have a low he and you have Nas. So this was very clearly a part of the game plan was to get Derwin down in the box. Even without Chris Harris in the game, 
we saw enough out of Alohi last week that Coach Daly has a lot of confidence in him being back there over the top. So Derwin is now walked down towards, quote unquote, the box. So he can make an impact. If they try to run the ball out here, he's a threat to blitz. We have the numbers that are somewhat close to the line of scrimmage. Um, now, what you're going to see here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through just a little bit through run fit. So every man is responsible for a gap. So right here, Uchida Nwosu is responsible for the C gap. He's everything outside the tackle. Um, you have down in here, Limbaugh. He has A gap right here between the center and guard. You have Jerry Tillery, who looks like he's playing B gap, which is between the guard and tackle. You have Kyler Fackerel, who's in C gap. And then you have, you still have your two linebackers to take up the open gaps. So we have um, Kaiser White here that's going to be walking up into B gap. And then you have, um, this is Drew Tranquil, who's going to have the opposite A gap that, from Limbaugh Joseph. Mm -hmm. So all the gaps are taken up. Now, what you're going to see as this play develops is they're all zoning this way. So this tackle is not responsible to block Uchina. He's actually responsible to come up here and try to block out here on Kaiser White. So as the play moves, you'll see Uchina. He does a great job of squeezing down the line of scrimmage. These guys do a good job of stopping the line. So he has to try to come here and cut back. Uchina closes down, makes a great play, and they pick up no yards on second down and eight. So Uchina squeezes. Comes down, he tries to cut back, makes Come the back. play in the box. Nice. It's just a huge impact. This is just that that's just a dominant play. You know, like they tried to come right. We stuffed them. He tried to cut back. Our contain was right there. Mm -hmm. So that that that's just technique. We have numbers and they're better here, but we still have too high on, on both of those plays. You still have two guys at 12 plus yards. So it's just us playing better, is what what really came from um Monday's game. Also, the second series. We had gone down and scored. They stopped us. We punted. Second series, they threw the ball three times. Right. They said, all right, run's not working, right? So they go try to throw the ball three times. They get two, three yards, and they, they punt it back. And then what I want to look at next is another, another um, example of our D-line just playing better. Let me bring it up for you right now. All right. All right. So this next play, this is just an example of a very disciplined, well-coached, good defensive line. Right now, it's second and 25. So... It, it's just, it's, this is not a good, good down and distance for any team to come up with a play. Um, and when you're playing coaching high school football, you're like, Hey, watch the screen, watch the screen, watch the screen. But these guys are still, they're going to get excited when they're not blocked on a screen play. All these linemen are going to sit back for a half a second, try to fool these guys into thinking it's a pass. So they start to rush and then they're all going to release coming downfield to try to block a linebacker or a DB. Um, watch, watch, just, I want you to watch the D line. They're going to recognize it right away and they start their rush. They recognize and they all turn around and sprint right back to the line of scrimmage in a screen, a D line. And as soon as you recognize it, you want to go right back to where you started hmm. because if they let you go, they're trying to get to where you vacated. So this is just an example of an extremely disciplined, like smart, well-coached team. They all sprint right straight back. Jacobs has nowhere to go. He ends up leaking back to the other side and they, we end up making a play, but it's pretty incredible to watch how well our, our defensive line just snaps straight back. They're ready to pick off a ball. Like they're ready to make a play. Watch as soon as this ball snap, boom, it's screen. We're all going back. Covington's in the way. Jerry Tillery's in the way. <laughs> they're all back there in the lane of the throw, which could have, could have created a huge turnover. Just another aspect of our D line getting better, being extremely disciplined. Yeah. That's awesome. We needed that. We wanted to see that after the last two weeks of just them running all over us and right. getting away with stuff like this. So if it's if it's just a technique thing, like how how good can this defense be if they're improving? Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So this is this is one of the plays that the Raiders actually had a decently successful run, but I think we got lined up incorrectly. I think this was just a matter of formation. It's not a matter of them beating us up by any means. Now, this may be what Staley wanted, but I'm pretty sure today they're looking at film and they're correcting this. Um, they're in 21 personnel, meaning two running backs. You got a fullback and a running back and a tight end. So this is a really run-heavy set. And mm. on, on, on top of that, both of your wide receivers are in here really tight to try to help out with some uh, run blocking. So you almost know a run's coming here on first and 10. Um, but what happens is that's really weird is you have three guys to the weak side of the formation. Weak side, meaning center, guard, tackle. They have nose guard, D tackle, outside linebacker, all to the weak side. And then on the strong side, all they have is D 
D-tackle, outside backer. Um, just the numbers are not right. There's something off here with who aligned where. If this guy just would have bumped out a shade and this guy bumps to the other side of the center, everything gets balanced. Mm. That's why I believe that there was just an alignment mistake here. And that's why things did not go well. Once you see me watch, watch me run this play, um, they pick up six, seven yards because we were not aligned correctly. Mm. Um, so that that's not a us getting beat up. That's not a long-term thing. That's a one-off mistake that hopefully we can fix here pretty quick. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, this film, this clip I picked up just because I thought it was cool because we heard so much about this in the offseason and haven't really seen it a whole lot. Um, this is 450 left. This is actually the series that we end up eventually picking him off and kind of sealing the game. Um, but Joey Bosa here drops into coverage. So for those of you, I, when I was watching the game, I didn't see it happen. Um, so just kind of a fun wrinkle that you can see added in here. Um, Joey is right here on the edge. Um, you can see him just hop back in coverage and almost create like a little bracket. Um, and it looks like Carr's kind of looking that way to try to throw there. Um, he's covering up Renfro and he's able to kind of stop the idea of looking over that way. Hmm. Um, it, I don't know. I just thought it was cool to actually see this in action. This big talk that we've seen of Joey Bosa dropping out into coverage. Yeah, he does, wow. a, he does a pretty good job and he races an immediate throw. I wow. would have loved to see Hunter Renfro catch that ball get and just murdered. get picked up. Yeah. Picked up just and carried back like a little boy. Bombed. Yeah. You know, like what, what was he thinking when he went on his route and saw Joey Bosa inside? Oh, <laughs> shit. You know? Just, just, just a cool, just a cool idea of seeing this, some of the, the complexities of this defense that are continuing to work here. Wow. The last clip I'm going to show is the, the, the holding <laughs> that really pissed off Joey Bosa. So, any officials that are watching, I went ahead and looked at your rule book. Um, <laughs> just so we're all on the same page. Patty Kyle um, strikes. I, mean, yeah, I love I it. I pulled so, it up here for you. Offensive holding is defined as use of hands or arms to materially restrict an opponent or alter the defender's path or angle of pursuit. It is a foul regardless of where the blocker's hands are, inside or outside the frame, the defender's body. Material restrictions include, but are not limited to, grabbing or tackling an opponent, check. <laughs> Hooking, jerking, twisting, or turning an opponent, check. Pulling it to the ground, almost check. But Joey Bosa is just really strong, so he couldn't pull him to the ground. Right. But you'll see, watch out here, Joey Bosa. Joey, I got your back, dude. This was most definitely a hold as you watch this play develop. It's pretty blatant, right in front of the official, right there, just yeah. gets tackled. Oh, yeah. my it's, God. It's like, come, come on, guys. Yeah. Come on. You know, and that could have turned into a 60 yard gain touchdown. Right. Yeah. And they completely blew it. What so. are they looking at? I don't know. I don't, they were watching car and throw a deep <laughs> ball that everyone's obsessed with. I don't know. Wow. Don't get it. Well, awesome. Well, hey, folks, there you go. Coach taking a look at our defensive line, who I guess didn't really change anything other than just playing better. There was, and, yeah, uh, there was some some little formation adjustments, but nothing major, man. Like it, it was just them. They beat up the Raiders' offensive line. Like we showed up to play. Well, it's just that much more exciting then to see what these guys are going to do as they progressively get better week to week. Uh, hey, awesome, thank you, Coach. Great moments are born of great opportunity. All comes down to today. You take this helmet and you put it right in his numbers, okay? I want to see nothing but snot bubbles in his nose. A lot of people want to blame coaches for a lot of things. Nobody puts <laughs> coaches up. And we shut them down because we can't. It's because I believed in you. And I wish I could say something that was classy and inspirational. But it just wouldn't be our style. Let's do it. <laughs> 